Air cover is not insurance for your Airbnb. Oh, what do you mean it's not insurance? We'll tell you when exactly you should use air cover and why it is not enough. Hi, I'm Sarah Karakayan. And I'm Annette Grant. And together we are Thanks for visiting. We've been hosting for well over a decade, welcomed tens of thousands of guests, and earned thousands of five-star reviews. Our portfolio continues to bring in over one and a half million year over year, and supported not only by the industry's leading brands, but also some of the biggest media outlets. And we're here to help you with your furnished rental. What is air cover? Damage protection covers you if a guest damages your place or belongings during an Airbnb stay. You are reimbursed for certain damage caused by guests to your home and belongings if the guest does not pay for the damage. It also reimburses for extra cleaning services in certain cases like removing stains left by guests or their invitees or pet accidents, smoke odor removal, or when required due to additional unapproved guests. This is such Okay, because what they don't say in here is if they deem it worthy of reimbursing you. And most of the time, you have another guest that's getting ready to check in, so you don't have all day to be spending online trying to get this rectified. You have to get the smoke out, correct the, the stain. Uh, if these things happen, uh, most guests are wonderful, but if and when something like this happens, you first gotta take care of your property while also trying to get the claim taken care of. So here's the deal, okay? Air cover, it, honestly, it is a nice feature, okay? I want you to think of it as a feature of booking an Airbnb, booking a stay through the Airbnb OTA, all right? Because here's what you have to do, and just get this as part of your your protocol when hosting any stay, whether you get it from Airbnb, Verbo, a direct booking, booking.com, what have you. If there are damages, make sure anything that you have a conversation about with your guest is in some sort of written communication, whether it's in the app, it's an email, text form, and then save it, okay? And I would create a file on your computer, maybe you use Google Drive, just keep it all in one place. And then if the damage is photographable, photograph it immediately. Like once the guest, this is why it's imperative to have your guest or your place either cleaned or inspected right after a guest checks out. That way, if you take it with your phone, most Androids and iPhones will, will you know, time, date, time, location stamp it. Yes, so there's no if, ands, or buts that it happened and you documented it right when the guest checked out, okay? And so you're gonna keep all this information in one place. While we're on the subject of damages, do yourself a favor, just keep this rolling. Watch our video on how to prevent parties at your short-term rental. We hear from new hosts every day. One of their biggest concerns is liability. Liability of their property, themselves, the guest. It is something that quite frankly keeps us up at night. It keeps most hosts up at night if you are not properly insured. And that is why this is so, so important to not rely just on air cover, you need to make sure that you and your property are properly insured. A great question to ask your insurance company is whether or not you can have exterior cameras. You're like, I have to ask, yeah, you do. Sometimes they won't support it, and if they do, it depends on where. Watch this video all about mistakes to not make with your exterior security camera. If you take nothing else away from today's video, take this away, okay? Air cover, is a nice service that Airbnb will sometimes afford you when they deem it's appropriate before you'd have to go then to your insurance company. Because if AirCover decides not to cover your claim, which they can totally do, you now have the appropriate backup, which is actual insurance that knows you are operating as a short-term rental because AirCover is not a policy in your personal name. Okay, air cover serves Airbnb. It's a nice thing to offer its hosts and its guests, right? So that it can just take that friction away sometimes and just Airbnb will take care of it. But it's not an insurance policy under your name. You know how like on your homeowner's insurance policy, if you were to pull it up, it has your name on it, maybe your partner's name. Your address, your yes. exact address. Yeah, air cover is not that for you. Now, I'll even go even further that some new hosts will just get homeowner's insurance and they won't disclose to their insurer that they plan on operating that home as an Airbnb, as a short-term rental. And that's a huge mistake 
because when you go to file a claim with them, they're going to ask you what happened. And if once they figure out that it was done because of a short-term stay and you're not covered for short-term stays, it's not going to cover. And there are some huge liabilities that you're at risk with when you host a short-term rental home. And if they don't know that's what you're doing, I mean, that's where your entire asset, everything you poured into it can really honestly go down the drain. Since Airbnb offers air cover, we might as well try to see mm -hmm. if they'll cover whatever happened. And they do. They yeah, do they have. Them. No, they're great. But not without details and documentation. And this is so important, not only for air cover, but for your insurance, for your team, for your peace of mind. When you're setting up your Airbnb, if you can, the earlier you can start on documenting and keeping things organized, the better from everything that you've purchased for your short-term rental, everything that you've even, you know, if you can have receipts for them, have them all in one place and fo original photos, date and time stamped, all of this stuff is important when you are going to go to make that claim either to air cover or to your insurance company. Let's say you want to reach out to air cover and you will make up a scenario. Okay. A guest spilled a glass of red wine on your fabric sofa. All right. And that's tough, right? Cause it's a big stain. You already have to sit with the fact that your next guest is probably going to have to see it. Cause you ain't getting rid of that between, <laughs> between stays. So this is why what Annette just said, you're going to want to pull that receipt from when you purchase that sofa. And hopefully it's easily searchable. That's why every receipt you upload into your, we like to use Google Drive, name the receipt. And if it's a receipt of a bunch of things, I would still do something so you can search for it, okay? Even if you are old school, keep, even if it's paper receipts, keep them somewhere. <laughs> you know, we don't want you to do paper, but I know. You might be old school like me. I have a filing cabinet still. But keep the receipts so you can have them digitally too, because you're going to have to upload them. Yeah. You don't want them. that ink to wear away. Like that's yeah. because, okay, here's, happens. here's why, because when you go to air cover, so what you're going to do is when you log into your Airbnb account, make sure you're on the host side of your Airbnb account, you're going to go to Airbnb resolution center. And this is where you're going to file your claim. You're going to reach out to Airbnb resolution and you are going to document what happened this day between these dates with this guest and give them the reservation code that comes with every single stay and say, this happened. Automatically send them photos of the stain on the couch, the receipt of when you originally purchased the sofa. If you have affirmed, affirmative confirmation from the guests that they're admitting fault, mm -hmm. which I will tell you, like I would say 95% of the time Absolutely. they do. Absolutely. Submit that screenshot as well. And then this is what I, has taken me over the years to like get ahead of air cover is I've already called my upholstery cleaner and I've gotten a quote from them and I've asked them to send me a PDF so I can also submit that with my claim because they're gonna want some sort of invoice of how much it's going to cost you to fix the issue. You submit all of this to air cover and you cross your fingers. So while we're going through these incidents that may occur and probably will occur at some point in time, but don't fret, a lot of times, you know, the guests are lovely. They are going to let you know that they damaged something. So that's where the communication starts with that guest. Maybe the guest wants to go ahead and just take care of it for you, or they also know about air cover. But a lot of times you're gonna know ahead of time, there's gonna be some communication with you and the guest. And then that's when you're gonna get the resolution center involved and you're gonna start to, to talk about air cover. But I just want everybody to kind of relax and know that sometimes it's not directly this going to air cover, going to your insurance, there's communication with your guest and then start to resolve the issue. And maybe they're gonna pay for it, maybe they aren't, but there's levels to it and they'll never all be the same. No incident will be the same or no guest will be the same um, interaction with you when you go to resolve it. Speed matters. You can't wait weeks and weeks before submitting your claim to air cover. I recommend doing it immediately after the guest checks out that same day that way there is no who done it question. Like we know it was that guest because the next guest hasn't checked in yet. So that's why it's great to have all those receipts ready to go, having people to call to send you invoices, like get it settled. Even if you're waiting on an invoice from your pollster company, like in my example, still submit the claim and let them know I've got an invoice coming on how much it's going to cost to fix the problem. So just get that cup, that, that request started as soon as you can. So here's how it can possibly end up 
once you submit your claim. Sometimes the air cover responds, responds same day, sometimes the day or two later. Sometimes you get a ping them. So like, it's like, hey, are you paying attention to me? So don't let go of your request. Like that is for you to own and see it through. It is not Airbnb's fault. They're gonna tell you it's not their fault if they don't respond in a timely manner. But it can end up in, I think, one of three ways. Yep, they cover the whole thing, which is score. They cover partial. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take whatever we can get. And then they don't cover it at all. They're literally like, sorry about your luck. We ain't covering that. What won't they cover? Especially, I will tell you that like, for the most part, if it's obvious, yes, they'll throw you a bone. Yeah. If it's smell related, it's really hard to take a picture <laughs> of a really smelly short term rental. Do they <coughs> smoke cigarettes? Do they smoke marijuana? Who knows what that scent is, but it won't go away. Like maybe they cooked something that was really like, Oof foul and you're like really upset about it because you have a guest. It's you. offensive. There's it's offensive yes. sense. Like that's a hard thing to prove. Like I find that scent offensive. Yeah, but try taking a picture of a scent. It doesn't work well. <laughs> it's not a scratch and sniff <laughs> picture. TFE, TFE pro, pro tip. tip. Right now, today, make a plan. If you walk into your short-term rental after the guest checks out and it smells. This can be a wide variety of solutions and you have to choose the one that you're most comfortable with, okay? Maybe it's, you know that for you, it's washing down the walls with soap and water and spraying your curtains with Lysol. Or maybe you're all about uh, oil, uh, incense oils. You know what I mean? What are those called? Natural oils, whatever. Maybe you're okay with, and these are highly debated, but I'm gonna give it to you and then you do with it what you want an ozone machine and have that ready to go. This way, like your cleaning team knows, okay, if they walk in, it smells like fish. They walk in, it smells like marijuana. They walk in, it smells like cigarettes. They already know what you, what you would tell them. They don't even have to ping you. I mean, they should ping you and tell you it smells, but they can just execute on getting it smell free. Some exciting news though, is that there are, along with noise monitoring devices, there are cigarette smoke monitoring devices and they're all in one. For example, Minute, so we're gonna put a link in the show notes for that device. This is how you can get ahead of those potential stinky situations. And you can include whatever minute reads in mm. your air cover boom policy or air cover request. They are actually official partners with Airbnb too. Yeah. All right, so that's damage to your property, right? And we use something really, really low cost in the grand scheme of things like a sofa stain. Or yeah, those like damage for items inside the property. Right, and here's the deal. Air cover doesn't cover them. You're not gonna call your insurance company to cover that. You really shouldn't. It's in most cases, not worth it for you to pay your deductible. You know what I'm saying? It's just not worth it to you. What might be worth it is personal injury, right? To your guests while they're on your property or during their stay, they could be off your property and still try to come after you. Here's what Airbnb says about their host liability insurance. It protects you in the unlikely event that you're found legally responsible for a guest being hurt or their property being damaged or stolen during an Airbnb stay at your place. While air cover for hosts protects you while you're hosting an Airbnb stay or experience, it is not a substitute for personal insurance. This is where you do not want to be caught without your own insurance policy, with your name on it, knowing that you are short-term renting your property. So Airbnb is saying that the host liability coverage, they might assist with liability as it relates to injury of your guest or your guest's guest. But that does not mean that they definitely will, and that is where it can get really expensive if someone sues you for getting hurt during a stay at your property. And we're, we're just talking about Airbnb right now. So of course we want you to be able to get reservations from a multitude of places. Maybe it's Verbo, maybe it's booking.com, maybe it's your own direct booking site. So also having that insurance policy for all stays is gonna be really important. And let's talk about some other things that you might not even be thinking about and why insurance is so important different from air cover. So for instance, let's say there is something, your home is damaged and you cannot have reservations for a while. Air cover is not going to cover your loss of business. Where if you have proper short-term rental insurance, that will cover that loss of business, that those stays that you would have, would have had and made that income. Because 
I don't know about you, but the first of the month comes around really quick and having to pay um, mortgage utilities. You're are, so many responsible for that <laughs> note, so, that mortgage bill when it comes the next month. And not all short-term rental sh coverage offers loss mm -hmm. of revenue. You need so to make sure it's this covered. section of our video, take right. notes so you can call your broker. And if you do have insurance, like that's awesome. Good for you. Like I'm glad that you've done that. But ask and see if any of the things that we're about to talk about, see, and, and what is the cap on that loss of revenue, right? They should know how much you anticipate making each year. And then they'll give you a portion of what they would pay you back for certain situations. And you should know what that is. Or let's get into some other things. So loss of business. The loss of business might be because Sarah, bed bugs. Sarah's going to get, yeah, bed bugs, fleas. Um, yeah. So you want to make sure Those that are you're expensive cover, to... covered, covered for that. Things that you might not be thinking about. Dog bites. I think I read it's like the number two injury in the, in the U.S. So that's if your guest brings a pet. Um, you know, that could be maybe if your guest gets, I think, maybe bit by a one dog. of your neighbors. Yeah. Who, who knows? So dog bites. Um Outside amenities, if you're thinking, oh, I want to offer kayak, canoe, bicycles, there's a liability there. I don't know. I know every time I go on um, a vacation and I actually go rent a bicycle or a kayak, you better believe I'm signing. There's a waiver. I'm basically signing, signing everything away, signing all my liability away. So you want to make sure that you're covered for those. Obviously, if you're going to have a hot tub, kayak, anything like that that is associated that you offer with the house. Um, something people don't think about either is we have a lot of hosts, they want to leave a bottle of wine. There is, um, there's liquor liability too. So you want to dig in there. What else did I potentially not think I think of it's just that? really important. Squatters. That you, <gasps> squatters. Squatters. Right. If someone refuses to leave your property and like, let's say you've got another reservation coming in, it's a whole thing. Um, state to state that's dependent. So just ask your broker, like what happens if someone won't leave? Trust us. Like this is not a fun conversation to have. We are giving you the doomsday, like the worst of the worst, but the worst case scenario can and does happen. And we're not doing our job as of informing hosts of all these things. So please, you have to do your due diligence. The reason we're talking about all these things is we want to protect you and your asset and of course the guest in the best way we can. When it comes to protecting your property, knowing everything that's going on around it so you can prevent damages or respond to them quickly, you got to know how to navigate Airbnb's policies around security cameras. But we've got a quick shortcut for you on the best way to list the fact that you have this on your property and exactly what to say. If you want that shortcut, go ahead into the show notes. We've got that for you there. And with that, I'm Sarah Karakayan. I'm Annette Grant, and together we are... Thanks, thanks for visiting. visiting. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button. What are you waiting for?